So let me uh, start the conference off by introducing uh, Gary Graysaber. He is the group, group vice president uh, for Oracle Applications, and uh, Gary's a longtime friend, and he, he and his team, um, we are so appreciative of their support of the conference and for being here and for presenting uh, great uh, education and information, uh, but also making themselves to uh, connect with you. So Gary, thank you. Thank you, John. It's good to see you. Hello, everybody, and, uh, and welcome to Denver, uh, the home of J.D. Edwards. Um, 45 years ago, 1977, J.D. Edwards was born here in Denver, um, and look, look where we are today. Um, you imagine what um, Denver looked like uh, 45 years ago. Um, I think my first time here was maybe about 30 years ago, and it looked so different. It was like a warehouse community, very industrial. Um, Really, really has transformed itself, um, just like J.D. Edwards, um, from green screen to what we have today. And I think um, we can all agree, you know, J.D. Edwards, this isn't your grandfather's <laughs> J.D. Edwards, with the, the modern UI, with the uh, digital tools that we have, the full suite, just in cloud options, um, the, the, and the customer success has just really been, um, really been astounding over the last, um, you know, the history, over the last 10 years especially. So um, how's everybody feeling this morning? Everyone feeling, you know, awake and peppy? Um, you know, a lot of times when I have family or friends come in, they, you know, they, they say the elevation, it's hitting me. I, I can feel the, uh, something different. There's something different, a little dry, a little tired, a little, little uh, sleepy. But did you know that Denver has, 17% less oxygen than other parts of the country. So it's normal that you feel that way. Drink a lot of water, drink your, uh, your caffeine as well, stay alert, because there's a lot, of, a lot of learning ahead of us here. Um, and um, with that, let's go to the next, uh, next slide here. Um, so I wanna, I wanna just take a moment to, to um, recognize Release 23. Um, and as, as most of you know, we. We changed our release naming convention a couple years ago to a model year um, release naming convention. Release 23 is our current product in the market. Um, we've been working hard on release 24, excited to showcase some of those um, innovations uh, for you this week. Um, but I just think it's an amazing time, and I've probably said this every year for the last five years, it's an amazing time to be in IT and to play with technologies. Um, Gen, I, Gen AI is stealing the show right now. It's, you know, it's almost, it seems like it's 100% of the headline. Gen AI, I'm mean, gonna generate text, now we're gonna generate images and videos and PowerPoints and you know, all that um, capability. But you know, let's not forget about all the other tools in our toolkit that we can take advantage of. Um, some of it you've already taken advantage of. Some, you know, others may not have taken advantage of things like IOT or mobile solutions, automation, um, you know, process optimization, uh, big data, all these solutions, you know, you know, we feel very, um, very proud of, of our platform and how it allows you to take advantage of these technologies. You know, ones that we've thought of, but then ones that are emerging as well. And I think Gen AI is just the next you know, version of that, although it's a big one. I mean, it is a, you know, possibly the biggest change in IT, you know, ahead of us, um, you know, in, in, a, in quite a long time. Um, so, but, you know, that's why we continue to invest in Release 23 uh, with our continuous innovation. You know, you'll see releases periodically through the year um, culminating in a, in a, a Release 24, as is. Um, uh, later this year. And so that's why we do it to do continuous innovation, continue to build up that digital platform so you can solve your company's you know, most challenging business problems um, and also introduce cloud options to you. Because you know, cloud is, you know, I always say it's an accelerant to your digital and to your initiatives. So it can really help you accelerate. Um, Gen AI is just one example of something that, that can uniquely be done in the cloud you know, really hard to do something like that um, on premise. So next slide. Um, 
You know, one thing that, that I like to point out is, um, well, th this event is all about showcasing our products, our innovations, but more importantly is um, sharing customer success. You know, listen to our, our cust other customers, listen to our partners, go visit the demo grounds, you know, see where other customers have been successful because, you know, we think that is a repeatable success. Um, and so, you know, that's, you know, that's very important. Um, this is my team's favorite event. Um, not only because we're, we're uh, local, we can just drive in, um, but also it's um, very detailed. You know, you know, we're engineers. We like to show and talk about all the details of the product. Um, and again, sharing customer success is contagious. Um, so, you know, when we look across our customers and we, we meet with a lot of customers, you know, there's a few patterns that we see other customers taking where they're successful. You know, first is, you know, automating processes. You know, taking these time consuming, a lot of data entry, error prone processes, you know, take advantage of the orchestrator and workflow um, to automate those. You know, whether it's taking screens out of a process, so, you know, it's, it's one screen instead of three, uh, form exits, et cetera. Um, you know, automate those, those tasks, get digital data coming in so people don't have to rekey everything. Second one is optimize. You know, look at your processes, optimize them for your, for your, for your business. You know, interview your users, you know, um, enlist the help of global business process owners in your organization. So, you know, put someone in charge of those key business processes and have them, you know, be passionate about how they can optimize those for your business. Um, you know, use our, our extensibility framework. You know, Logic Extensions is one of the, the latest one where you can really do what you need, you know, the software to do without customizing. Uh, really a big, a big um, improvement that we had. And then finally, you know, transformation. Take advantage of these new digital technologies. You know, look at cloud solutions um, to really look at, you know, you know, what the future transformation looks like. Uh, finally, I think a key success is to enlist the help of our partners, of our ecosystem, you know, to help you. They're, they do this, you know, every day of the year. They've seen a lot of different customers, um, a lot of different uh, solutions. They can take those customer successes, apply them in your organization. So I think those are a few uh, key customer success patterns. Next slide. Um, so last week, speaking of cloud solutions, last week um, there was a Oracle event called Cloud World, Las Vegas. Um, big event showcasing all of Oracle's cloud solutions, applications, platforms, infrastructure. Um, our customers were there, JD customers were there seeing what's available. You know, I had conversations with customers about JDI words on OCI. The most common deployment, you know, cloud step is, is, is that. And, you know, now it's hundreds of customers doing that, um, really getting a good ROI um, on that, getting out of the data center. But also applications, um, you know, I talked to a customer about OTM, one about CPQ, um, one about uh, analytics. You know, um, just, just a, a broad set of, of things. Um, it was an event like this of JD Ever's customers, so it's you know, wonderful to see such a full room of passionate JD Ever's uh, professionals. Um, but it, it, you know, the way I look at the Oracle Cloud, it presents you with um, expanded set of options to take advantage of. You know, it's always, what is your biggest business challenge and how can technology help you address that? Um, and cloud can be a part of that, um, that equation for you. So next slide. Um, but this event in focus, um, it's been a couple years since we've gotten together with this detailed learning. This is all about JD Edwards. You know, it's, it's a learning opportunity for you all, showcase. Um, you know, our call to action is, you know, learn this week, the next few days, you know, learn what's possible. You know, if you're in IT, bring it back to your business users and, you know, share our passion with them about the, uh, all the things you can do, uh, what's possible, the art of the possible, you know, you know work together, um, apply these learnings back in your, your environment because that's, um, 
that's what's going to make, make us all um, successful. So with that, I just want to say thank you, all of our customers. Thank you, our partners. Thank you, Quest again, John and team, uh, for bringing us all together. Um, it's really, really special. Um, so with that, it's my pleasure, it's my honor to introduce uh, Paul Howe Cooper. Paul runs our J.D. Edwards Development Organization. He's done that for the last four years. So all you know, these releases, you know, it's not just one person. There's an army behind uh, Paul, but but he's been uh, his leadership is really uh, taking us to these these next levels. So Paul, I'll hand it over to you, sir. Thanks, Derek. Uh, thank you, Thanks. Appreciate it. I really wish you would have worn that Michigan, Michigan shirt. Had all these jokes queued up about some sort of upside down W on your shirt, but that's all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to In Focus 2023. Uh, nice to see everybody in person again. Uh, first time in what, four years, John said? So great to have you all here. Appreciate you all uh, making the trek. Uh, today, you know, we want this to be product focused. I think you all come here thinking in focus, you think hands on keyboard, you want to see product, you want to see it in action. So when we were looking at uh, this roadmap session, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to get my team up here, kind of a tag team between product management as well as product development, right? And have them showcase their solutions to you. So we're going to be doing a lot of demoing today. And that means I have to keep this as short as possible because we're already running a little bit late, so um, I won't say too much. Thank you, Quest, for obviously giving us this opportunity for my team to get up here and show you all the solutions that they've been de developing over the last year, year and a half. All right, so I will give a quick update on the state of JDE. I'll go through uh, our strategy. Hint, hasn't changed, but I'll remind you what it is. And then I'm going to hand it over to the team to basically do a showcase. So, quick update on the state of J.D. Edwards. Our community continues to grow. I mean, it is, it's been fantastic these last three years seeing the overall install base grow and the overall community grow. The number of people around the world using J.D. Edwards software continues to increase, and our connection with that community continues to increase. Okay, we pride ourselves on our customer engagement and our ability to interact through events such as this one, such as Blueprint, uh, virtually. You know, we, we try to support the regional user groups, we support AU sales events, and we also do, you know, one-on-one -on -one roadmap sessions with customers, you know, when they need to. So we, we, again, try to connect as much as possible with you all so that you understand who we are and, and, and who's building the product that you all use. We're continuously developing that product, you know, quarter after quarter, as Gary was describing. And as a result, we also are focused on providing content, right? We want to provide as much education content as we can. We want, to, we want to drive awareness of the products that we're building, what their value is, and how you, know, how you can implement them. So you can always go to learnjde.com. You know, for, for every solution that we put out the door, you'll find multiple artifacts on JD, learnjde.com that will support those solutions. In case, you know, and that, that also goes to driving adoption, right? And case in point there, look at our orchestrator, right? Orchestrator continues to be just you know, a game changer for, for us and for you all. If you look at your Quest app and you type in orchestrator, I'm guessing you're gonna find probably over, what is it, AJ, 50 sessions, 50 plus sessions this week from customers and partners showing you how to take advantage of orchestrator. And you guys keep blowing us away with your ideas on how to use it. And then of course you're feeding those, you know, the, that, that information back to us and we're getting new requirements every single week on how we can make it better. So thank you for that. Not only you know, do we have, uh, I'm gonna stay with the number 50. Uh, you know, this support team has been tracking milestones now for over, I don't know, two, three years now, John. And you know, so, so that we understand when you all are going live, when you're upgrading your system, when you're updating your system, so that we can obviously provide better support if we know, you know what your milestones are and when you call with a case, how we need to respond. And we've been averaging roughly 50 go lives per quarter, and that's just what you report to us, right? We don't know everything that happens out there in the community, but if you call Log and SR, let us know what the milestone is, we will track it, and that'll help us provide better service back to you all. 
Now, as far as implementing and adopting, some have, you know, are, are also adopting cloud, right? So they, they, you, you update your J.D. Everett solution, you may migrate it onto OCI, but it's not just the infrastructure, there are also new services being, you know, being made available out there. Uh, some of these are AI ML, we might see some of those today, hint. Um, as well as surrounding J.D. Edwards with best of breed SaaS uh, made available by Oracle. And then as you know, companies shift their mindset to a more cloud-oriented mindset and they look at their footprint and they look at, you know, we call them Chemleys, if you will, you know, and they do that evaluation, some do conclude that at the end of the day, let's make that full transformation to cloud and we, we obviously encourage that. Going on to our product strategy, our goal with our digital ERP, right, with release 23 and soon to be release 24, is to allow you to automate, optimize, and transform your business. Pretty straightforward goal. And the way we do that is we have a three-pronged strategy. Applications, system administration, digital platform. Each one of these areas has its own theme about what, what drives the roadmap in each one of those areas of focus, but it's that combination where you get the cumulative value, okay? And I don't want to talk more about the strategy today. I want more to, to, for you to see the strategy in action. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the team come up and actually show it to you, you know, show, show what's coming in release 24. But before we get there, I also, I can't get all the team up from India. You know, for some reason, Larry won't let me fly everybody over and present to you all, unfortunately. And I don't think I can get you all on a plane to go to India to, to see my team there and have them present to you. So, we're going to cue a video here and have a few of the folks uh, over in India tell you what they like about Release 23. What excites me most about Release 23 is Oracle Guided Learning integration with JD Edwards Enterprise One. It provides in-application user guidance. It improves productivity and reduces support costs by providing your employees with real-time step-by-step guidance as they do their job. In the Release 23, applications UAs are more intuitive. Employee organization chat is now more user friendly with additional information on open requisitions and the applicants. Logic extension enable users to create custom logic on the glass. What excites me most in release 23 is that we can call logic extension from form extension as well. In release 23, voucher match automation has the ability to automatically match the additional lines in vendor invoices. This increases the voucher match percentage and has made the voucher match automation even more powerful. In release 23, we delivered the ability for users to reset their own password. This has been the number one enhancement request from the TechSeq community. Self-service password reset improves user productivity and satisfaction while freeing up the administrator to focus on innovation. What excites me in release 23 is simple yet versatile UI. Address book map application has an improved UI and visibility of address locations on a map. In release 23, we have delivered two new workflows that are requested by our customers at sale. One is for approving the vouchers and other one is for approving the changes made to the bank details. These workflows help our customers to quickly and easily complete approval process and timely completion of activities. Thank you. All right, so that's a little bit about what was in release 23, what we've done over the last, I'd say, 12 or 18 months. So now we want to shift focus to what might be coming out soon in release 24, towards the end of the year. So I'm going to invite up on stage with me today, Jeff, AJ, Nicole, and Dave. Come on up. Well, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Nobody's got their music going. All right. I think I see a theme. So you guys had to dig back into the 1990s to find a winning team? No, no. We just had one more Super Bowl more recently than Green Bay. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Holy Broncos cow. of the 1900s. <laughs> you had to go back to the 1900s. Awesome. All right. So, again, product team, Jeff, why don't you... Uh, Tell us a little bit about what's happening with Release 24, what kind of drove the roadmap for Release 24, and then maybe cue the demo that uh, everyone's going to see. Yeah, perfect. Welcome, everybody. Um, you know, Paul, even though it's been a while, it's like being on the first tee. You're always a little nervous for the presentation. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. 
I'm excited to give you a preview of what's in release 24. I will take the next 35 minutes to go through every feature in detail. So please get another cup of coffee. We'll be here for a while. Now, in reality, release 24 builds upon release 22 and release 23. And a lot of that is customer-driven improvements. What we're going to see in the demo today is a couple of application enhancements in inventory that were driven by the M&D SIG. And so it's very important that you continue to engage because over 25 improvements in release 24 are SIG driven. And that's why we're excited to demo the software and walk through it here. So if we queue up the demo of what we're going to look at, there we go. So we're going to walk you through maybe a real world scenario of an unexpected event occurring. So think about this as a planner goes home for the day, is all happy because the production schedule is set for the next week. He's going to go home and work on his fantasy football team. <laughs> Overnight, it's been hot everywhere this summer. AC has been running overtime. There's a drip. The AC unit in the warehouse you know, has a problem, starts dripping and leaking on a location in the warehouse. Security guard, do doing his rounds, notices that, notifies the warehouse manager of a possible incident. The warehouse manager then very quickly sets that location on hold so that product can't be picked and then starts to do a coordinated response across the organization. That response can go into the planner having to replan, a buyer buying new product to possibly backfill for bad product, and an approval. Before we get to the demo, just a little, we'll, we'll spoil it, there's no impact, because that's the beauty of what Louis 24 and what that does. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the product team. Be nice to them. We have engineers who are not usually up here presenting, so be nice. I'll turn it over to Dave, and why don't we talk about some of the new enhancements. Yeah, well, we've got a couple of, like uh, just said, a couple of um, really exciting inventory management enhancements, starting with uh, automated safety stock. In a perfect world, we'd have no need for safety stock. We'd be able to replenish just in time all the time. But in the real world, for most manufacturing and distribution companies, safety stock provides that protection against unforeseen fluctuations in supplier demand, such as past due supply or um, unexpected demand or loss. Ideally, um, those safety stock values that we use to over plan would be maintained on a regular basis as our supply and demand conditions change. Um, but currently, that has to be done at the um, item lot location level. Um, so for large numbers of items, that can be a pretty challenging task. Um, beginning in release 24, you'll be able to dy dynamically maintain those values to, to optimize uh, inventory levels, um, reducing uh, stock outs, and also potentially excess inventory as well. The next one is the ability to um, put inventory locations on hold at the location level. Uh, currently, you've got to do that at the item lot location level. Um, in Jeff's imaginary scenario, we had some water leaking down from a vent in the warehouse, potentially damaging some items. Um, so we need to review those items. Like I said, currently, you'd have to do that um, even if it was just a handful of items, if those were lot numbered or serial number controlled items, that could be a lot of, of records that would need to be updated. Um, with release 24, you'll be able to do that at the location level with a location hold field in the uh, location master that'll define what kind of transactions are allowed. Uh, thereby eliminating the need to uh, update those individual item lot location records. And then um, 
once corrective action is taken, once we determine that that inventory is okay to use, it'll be just as easy to take that inventory off of hold. Okay, thanks Dave. So that's what's coming in release 24. But AJ, we talk about automate, optimize, and transform. And you continue to talk over and over and over and over and over again on Orchestrator. I'm sorry, <laughs> what was that? We have a what? We, 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 we have Wait, an orchestrator. About orchestrator. <laughs> so why don't you and the team walk us through how our digital platform can take what Dave talked about, automate that, and accelerate that course, that response to the situation. Great, love to. Enough, enough PowerPoints? Do we want to see some real software? Or software that's about to become real, anyway. It's only took um, us 30 minutes to get to <laughs> finally the Finally, we get to some product, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, this, the situation, there's an emergency in the warehouse. We need a coordinated response. In this demo, there are five players, and I'm going to play them all. So you'll see me uh, changing roles. This is going to happen quickly at the speed of business. But the themes that I want you to pick up on this are we're using the system to automate and recommend tasks for things that people who have to do things. There's human intervention, but there's also automation behind the scenes. And also, we're dropping markers, we're dropping data about what's happened so that we can go back and evaluate it later. So I'm going to start by being the, the security guard, first role. And um, what would the security guard be doing, looking, looking for things? Um, Security guard probably needs some sort of an application, a mobile app, a kiosk, a, uh, a tablet. Uh, we just mocked up uh, an enterprise one page in about 15 minutes. You can do it as well to do the things a security guard might do, time entry, order some pizza, uh, get really bored and maybe uh, watch J.D. Edwards training videos on Learn JDE. Or <laughs> That'll keep you up all yeah. night. <laughs> Reruns of the Super Bowls from the 1990s. 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all fun. But in this case, the uh, security guard wants to report an incident. So we click, and what is the incident? The minimum amount of information we need to report this incident is what happened, water leak from the air conditioning unit, uh, what was the date, where's the business unit, where's this um, warehouse, and the location. So this is, we see that water's dripping on location in the warehouse 1A. Uh, that's an okay, and by submitting that incident, that security guard has now initiated this process to the next player. So now I'm going to switch hats. The hats. first hat. Oh, How yeah. would you like a hat from your Denver University champions? Oh, go DU. There's, <laughs> there's some champions. There's a championship team. So now I'm switching hats, and the first alert goes to the warehouse manager, where we use our notification system. And the warehouse manager gets the information that the security guard reported. Uh, water leak from the air conditioning unit, but also gets a set of recommended actions. And these recommended actions, the first thing I might want to do if, as the warehouse manager is use Dave's feature that he just described. Put that entire location on hold. Now, as Dave said, there might be dozens, hundreds, thousands of parts, slots, serial numbers on there, um, but we have a new application enhancement to put the entire location on hold, but I can also do that with one click. Why can I do that with one click? We, we have an orchestrator, AJ? <laughs> they know. They, they know. know. <laughs> so with that one click, I have put that entire location on hold. None of that wet inventory is going to be picked and used in manufacturing. What I can also do is click on this completed button to note that I put that location on hold, and yes, I did that thing. Uh, this is going to be important later. Nicole's going to show you why, but um, I've recorded that response. The next thing I might want to do is alert and initiate a workflow to people downstream. I can start a workflow um, with a click of a button. Why can I start a workflow with a click of a button? Yeah. Palm of my hand. <laughs> yes, yes, always, always. And again, I can also in, uh, indicate that I clicked that completed button, and yes, I initiated the workflow to other interested parties. So, so, AJ, I mean, you keep on hitting complete, but, I mean, in theory, couldn't the system, because we have this thing called orchestrator, maybe do that? Shouldn't it just recognize that you did complete the task? And Certainly. We set up these buttons this time so you could see what was happening because, you know, we're going to get back to this in a minute. But, yes, these completed buttons could also be automated through the, the orchestrations. And um, finally, uh, another recommended action, I can submit an incident report. Um, 
but I'm not much on paperwork, so I'm gonna reject doing all that paperwork on the incident report and click that. So there I am, I'm the warehouse manager. I received this alert that something happened and in uh, a couple of easy clicks and a couple of easy recorded actions. I've also got this uh, com upcoming feature. We we've added a bell to these notifications, very similar to your email notifications. So if this thing becomes overdue and critical, this bell will, will change for me and it'll go a uh, uh, red exclamation point and I can you know, manage my, my uh, reminders here. So now that the workflow has been initiated, I go and I switch into good old traditional J.D. Edwards workflow, which hopefully you've noticed that we've uh, put some energy into recently. <laughs> I'm gonna switch hats again. Well, how about Stanley Cup Championship? Stanley Cup Championship. <laughs> now we're Paul, talking. Paul, how's, how's Wisconsin's um, NHL team? Right. Uh, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> ouch. <laughs> ouch. So these, by the way, these notifications could just as easily be coming from uh, e to emails. But as the um, planner, now I've got something to do. All of this inventory is compromised and wet. It's, it's out of stock, essentially. And so the first workflow goes to the planner, and the planner gets this message. There's been a warehouse uh, incident uh, uh, at your location where you have control of some of the parts. We think the next thing you should do as the planner is run a net change MRP. What does your manufacturing plan look like with all this inventory taken out? And this is a typical workflow approval. Again, one click, and I go in. This could be a purchase order approval. You know how to do approvals, but here we are in a J.D. Edwards workflow. Yeah, I think I am going to go run that net change MRP. The workflow is taking care of that. Just by clicking that OK, I've run that net change MRP, which then, of course, brings me to the next set of players. If the net change MRP says that we need to, to buy more inventory, maybe the next the next um, person down the line is the buyer, and so I'm gonna, I guess you got any more hats? I did, I did. What do you say? What Ed McCaffrey is that? What McCaffrey? McCaff is that? McCaffrey was a football star. Was he? You heard about McCaffrey, the football star, didn't you? Yeah. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> is it your dad's or the next generation's? <laughs> As Gary said, this is not your father's JD. Uh, ah. <laughs> So let me give you a new hat. Unfortunately, I lost my NBA championship hat when I drank too much. So, <laughs> so oh, nice. how about a different hat? Golf. Golf. So the next person down the line is the buyer, and the buyer may have some alerts. If the MRP says, we, yes, indeed, we need some more inventory, and again, in one click, I can be directed to what I should be doing as the buyer. And this comes up with one of the most beautiful J.D. Edwards screens you will ever see. <laughs> Dave, you want to walk us through uh, what, what's going on here? Well, I'm not going to walk through it, but uh, if you want to walk through, Friday I have a session on requirements planning. Whole hour, right. Friday. Yes, <laughs> correct. But this is the uh, planning summary, and what the buyer is looking at here are um, exception conditions, because AJ just clicked on high priority messages, and what we're looking at is four expedite messages that were generated. So there were some existing orders that were pulling in sooner because of the questionable inventory. Great. And so finally, since these might be expedited orders, the, the fifth and final person in the play here would be the director of purchasing. Just an alert to that director to be on the lookout for workflow approvals for expedited purchasing. So that's, um, that's how we do this at the speed of business. Nicole, you want to? Come over and there is software behind this and Nicole will uh, show you how we set it up. So as we talked about Blueprint, we have engineers who have to prove this actually works. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to run through some of the components that make up this process. The first thing that the night manager, uh, work warehouse manager did was kick off a notification. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an idea of what that notification looks like. It, uh, you can see in the in the message, it has, it's loading. <laughs> the beauty of doing live, live demos. demos. <laughs> okay, so you can recognize this me message. It was populated with that dynamic information that was entered about the incident that happened, as well as that recommended action section with all the links to hold the items, uh, the, to turn on, uh, in, invoke the workflow, and then these response links to track the tasks that were assigned in this notification. The actions are actually configured down here, 
and this one particular is the action to put the location on hold via an orchestration. And you can see over here, we have task tracking turned on. And so the task of putting that location on hold will be tracked and assigned to the user and they can disposition that when they have completed the action. The next part of the process was kicking off that workflow. So let's go ahead and take a look at the workflow. All right, so here is the workflow that notified the planner and allowed him to approve the run of MRP. So automatically on that approval, the MRP would be run, and then the buyer and procurement director would be notified after that, or multiple buyers and procurement directors. So at the end of the day with this, Nicole, just curious, I mean, maybe for the purposes of demo, maybe we maybe uh, predicted who the uh, buyer and the planner would be, but in theory, could we embed the logic within the system to actually dynamically figure that out? Definitely. We could write a workflow. So we could write an orchestration that the workflow could uh, reference to, for the list it. of buyers and planners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to run that workflow, and you can, see it, you can see generally what the workflow does. It looks at the items in that location. It goes and, and gathers the list. We will run that here. And in this case, for this location, all the items in the list had a couple of buyers and a couple of different planners, and those are the ones who could be notified with the workflow. Right. So, so in other words, the system is actually coordinating that response that you were talking about. That's right. Very cool. So after all of this happened, we also wanted to track what was happening. And we do that with task tracking. Like I said, that task tracking was enabled. And we can see the records that were created with that task tracking enablement and what happened. So the warehouse manager was completed the task of starting the workflow. Um, they completed the task of putting the location on hold. And they did not want to submit an incident report. But all of this date, time, user uh, information is stored and in the system. All right, so back to AJ's point about dropping markers throughout the system. We're starting to get more and more data, collect more and more data. You're showing task tracking. Is there anywhere else that we're actually monitoring? Yes, the workflow is also monitored with the workflow monitor. So this is a more interactive kind of uh, GUI representation of the workflow processes. And um, if it, wait for it to come up. <laughs> It looks beautiful. All right, yep. <laughs> Once it comes up, we can see that this workflow was completed, what the timing was, who was notified. There's our planner, buyer, and director, and the fact that the planner approved it, how long that, that took, and as well for this process in general over all the executions, we have, uh, we have charts here and, and information about averages and how the system is running overall. Nice. So, I mean, we're... Obviously capturing more information, that's more information, more data to ingest, right? We're also tracking, you know, how fast things are getting completed, how fast things are getting turned around so we can identify bottlenecks. Starting to sound eerily familiar to a Oh, 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 oh. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, Paul. All right, easy, don't throw easy. ahead. I won't throw ahead of the runner. All right. <laughs> so, very cool. Well, yeah. thank you, Nicole. You thank you, AJ. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Jeff, I mean, we just obviously covered quite a few enhancements from release 23 as well as release 24. So, why don't you give us a recap of what we saw? Okay, thanks, team. Again, want everybody to realize again, we talked about cumulative value. Building upon what we had in release 23 with watch lists, you know, notifications and E1 pages, going into what's coming in release 24 with workflow monitor, location holds, automatic safety stock, task tracking. All this combines to get you to where we think we're, where we want to go, we've truly queued up at Blueprint, mm. which is enterprise automation. So Paul. Yes. <laughs> Jeff. Release 24. Yes. as we've been talking about, is our first release with enterprise automation. Yes. With that, AJ talked about the digital markers. We have those in our ledger files today, your history tables. We're gonna be in the future delivering new ledgers, new capabilities, new markers throughout the system to have that insight, not just for a task, but through a complete process. 
We'll talk about that leads into modeling. With release 24, we're delivering two models as a first start for shipment to dispatch and requisition to receipt. So look for those in release 24, go to the detailed sessions this week. We're looking at to take, we've talked about this a lot with AJ and team, how we take those markers and allow you to automatically build your own models. So look for that in the future. We then go into analyze, which again, we have a rich repository of watch lists, UX1 to allow you to see what's going on and to analyze what's going on. We're gonna look at in the future of how we can, foreshadowing here, <laughs> what we may be able to do with AI in the future. Because if you don't have AI, well, well what are you, right? <laughs> Finally, solve. Solve is what we deliver an application product from location hold, automatic safety stock that Dave talked about, to our digital platform. Every problem may be solved slightly differently. We then measure. Nicole talked about workflow monitor coming out. We're looking at how we can have a more robust engine in the future to measure what's going on in the system. It's a little bit further out, but we're looking at that. And then finally, you start the whole cycle again. Yep. This is continuous improvement. So that's where we're going with the product, Paul. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for the recap on all of that. Obviously, there's quite a few enhancements that we walked through today, but I also appreciate you putting it in the context of enterprise automation. I mean, the new wave of innovation that we're investing in. I mean, we're very excited about this, obviously, but to actually see tangible solutions and correlate it you know, to the process and the cycle that we introduced 18 months ago, pretty yep. cool. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys step down, but before you go, AJ, I have one more hat for you. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to? Paul, so, everybody needs a hat. Oh, God. Brutal. Ouch. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Because um, I can orchestrate an HR violation. Just as, this is, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, good luck uh, securing the uh, first pick in the NFL draft next year. At least you'll have a draft pick. Fair. Fair. All right. Well, hopefully, we just showed you a few things that uh, the business analysts out there are excited to see and maybe uh, want to get release 24 downloaded, installed, so you can kick the tires on some of those innovations that the team just showed you, right? But that means that your system administrators out there are probably you know, now anticipating that they're going to be asked, obviously, to install release 24 when it comes out in a few months. So we've, we're still trying to make you know, investments in this area as well and trying to make your job as easy as possible. So I'm gonna welcome up Clayton and Dave to talk through how we've been making system administration but also the, the, the role of the BA a little bit easier in evaluating and assessing the impact that we're gonna have with our updates and making that business case to get release 24 installed. Dave, Clayton. All right, we're coming. Wow. <laughs> Well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Yeah, you can at least turn around. So, okay, Bakhtiari, all right, we're okay. We're okay. We're, we're half Green Bay. Thanks, Paul. So, yes, you guys have heard. Wait, wait, Dave, is that Purdue? Do they have a football team? We're more of a basketball school, but we yeah. do have one more win than the Broncos do. So. Well, that, you got that going for you. <laughs> so, as Paul said, system administration is a big part of our initiative, and as a part of that, we've really focused a lot on predictive patching or making it easier for you guys to consume our patches and our innovations. So uh, one of the things with release 24 we are going to be introducing is uh, this enhanced version of impact analysis. And so we want to be able to take uh, many of these roles that you guys have as customers or as partners that, that include business analysts, the system administrator, the approval piece, all these combined together really make up you know, how a patch will end up into a system for our end users and make sure that you guys can continue to continue on with JD Edwards and get a lot of these great innovations. So, impact analysis. Let's, uh, Dave, why don't you run us through uh, this new tool, or this enhanced tool that we've got. Okay, we gotta get switched over. There we go. Oh, Done? Okay. Good. All right, so I'm gonna assume the role or the, wear the hat of a business analyst. <laughs> so I'm gonna jump, go ahead and jump into the impact analysis summary and take a look what we've done here. So I'm gonna go ahead on the left side here on the grid, you can see 
Well, you used to be able to see. Uh, you can see this update, uh, update eight, uh, excuse me, update eight has over 11,000 objects, uh, which is a little bit more than I was expecting. And uh, but, but before I throw up my hands and give up uh, and try to convince management to take this back, this this update, let's take a little closer look at what's actually going on here. If I go to the right here, I can see in this graph that it's actually telling me that over 98% of my objects are already code current. And in fact, the only changes that are, are going to, or the only objects that are going to be replaced are less than 180 objects that I have to worry about. So since everybody is code current in the audience, this is exactly what their pie chart should look like? Everybody yeah, it's just it's exactly snap. Like this. Yeah. Fair, fair. Yeah, I don't know what the problem is. This should be pretty easy. Um, <laughs> so with that good news, let me dive a little bit deeper and look at these. Of those 180 objects, only uh, over 94% of those aren't even customized. So that's even a better story. So I don't have to bother my ERP manager to go and get those retrofitted and so on. Because mm -hmm. that's always another pain point, right Clayton? Yep, absolutely. We've talked to a lot of our customers, a lot of our partners, we've listened to our tech SIG, shout out to our tech SIG people out there, appreciate you all. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, we've, we've listened to you and we've taken a lot of that feedback and incorporated this into, you know, where are the long poles in the process of getting through, taking your updates, applying patches, taking your customizations and putting them back in place is extremely important to your business. And so we recognize that we want to illustrate where that impact is going to be and that's your first step on the journey of applying these patches and making sure that you can get back to business as normal after the patch is applied. That's right. So I'm feeling pretty good now. I think I can convince my ERP manager to approve this and keep moving. But let's dive a little bit deeper and learn, see what more I can learn about what's going on here with this update. Let me minimize this so I can see. So down here below, I've got a list. This shows me all of the objects that are actually going to be replaced, the 180 objects. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and divide these out, assign these out to my fellow BAs based on what product areas they support, and they can start trying to determine what, you know, building an impact plan, come up with a test plan on how they want to validate, uh, you know, taking those objects going forward. But as we mentioned earlier, let's take a little closer look. We had some customizations. So I can filter on that and take a little, little look at what those are. I think I've got nine of them here, as you can see. And so I can take this list now and bring them to my ERP manager and ask them to go ahead and start coming up with a plan to retrofit those customizations. Or if those customizations are still needed at all. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a great opportunity to revisit whether or not you even need them. Oh, you know, they could have been completely retrofitted or turned into personalizations. And, you know, they could have been patches that were delivered by us that Anyway, Dave, we've got uh, object usage tracking turned on here, so we, uh, are, we're trying to illustrate that um, with, through this new application, Enhanced Application. We want to walk them through how we uh, show, the, show these guys how things are actually used with the patch. Sure. Yeah, object tracking is uh, something we delivered about four or five years back. Uh, it, tr it captures any time an application, a, a report, UBE, or a business function is used. The original intent was for this exact purpose, to help you during your impact analysis determine what objects are being used, which objects are not being used to help you focus where you want to do your testing. As you can see in this example, of the nine customizations, only one is actually being used here. What? I mean, people customize the software and then don't use the customization? Yes. <laughs> that never happens. That cannot happen. I, it's not very common, but I've heard it happen. On a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've heard so, a rumor of it? <laughs> yes. All right. So this is another example of another great opportunity to revisit those and say, do I need that anymore? Yep. If I go a little deeper and just look, if I want to see all of the objects, if I can get this to work here, um, in, the, in the update that I've been used, I can go ahead and just filter on that. As you can see, in this case, only 13 of those 180 objects are being used. And what's important here is you want to kind of take a look at the usage count here, too. So this helps the business analysts really focus their attention on what, in this case, uh, purchase orders or the procure, procure, procurement area. They want to focus their attention on those types of validations. Yeah, testing after the patch has been applied is yet another really long pole in that tent. So we want to be able to focus where you guys are supposed to go about and make sure that you've validated that the system, these objects, these processes are still working because these are the ones that are being used by the end users. Right. Uh, Dave, another piece that came up quite a bit was um, back in the day we had an extensibility recommendation of cloning objects. So we, customers would actually take a JD Edwards, a pristine object, make a copy of it. That way they didn't lose their customizations moving forward. 
show these guys how we can keep track of that and actually give them an illustration of what, um, what's happened with an object that you know, has been replaced and has been cloned before. Right. So back in release 22, we, we introduced the uh, ability in the OMW to start capturing uh, any time an object was copied uh, for this exact reason. So now we know when you've copied one of our objects and we know what those, what those children are. So in this case, this particular object has been, is being changed by the, up, by the update that's, we're, we're gonna, that we want to take. And now we have a list of what those children objects are. So we wanna, we, now we can take a look and see, are those changes that J.D. Edwards is delivering, are they something that we want to also apply to our children objects? Uh, prior to this, you know, this is all on, on spreadsheets and those types of things are often yeah, lost keeping and forgotten. Yeah, manually. It's crazy. Right. We don't need to do that anymore. Right. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. 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 That's the new word. That is yeah. not the, the word for the week. It is my word for the week. <laughs> We're bringing back bonkers. Great. Uh, Dave, the last thing that I really wanted you to incorporate was uh, we've got feedback that, you know, table changes are a big part of the update. We want to make sure that our audit teams, that, that uh, the end, that our administrators understand what structured changes or index changes might happen because there are typically downstream effects when a table actually changes, the big impact. Show these guys how we uh, monitor and keep track of that. Yep, yeah, impact analysis now will analyze all of your table and indexes, compare it to what we're delivering you and identify all of the changes that were made. Uh, generally, index changes are added when you need to for performance reason or to support a customization. So now you can go here and look and find out all of the uh, tables and indexes that have changed so that, again, you can take that as part of your analysis going forward. And then, Clayton, there's one more thing I wanted to uh, call out, uh, point out to you and the, and the group uh, is around another major SIG uh, and business partner request related to special instructions. Uh, we brought that in-house as well. It's in the system now, so you can start tracking this in the system, and not only manual, instructions, uh, once, once you've completed them, you can track, check those off. You don't have to worry about them anymore, but also UDC codes and data dictionary glossaries. You can identify which ones you want to take, which ones you want to skip, which ones you want to ignore, and so on. Yeah, there, you know, for an app, a typical application update, there's over 200 pages of special instructions that have to be applied mm -hmm. manually. And we do this on purpose because the manual gives you an option to apply it to your business. It gives you the choice as to whether you want to take this glossary change or new UDC values. You don't always want to do that. So now with this tool, you'll be able to preset some values. And every time you apply this patch, those values will, can be automated when you apply the patch to actually take effect for you. So special instructions are going to be coming a, a big part of the, our past instead of our future. So we're automating what we can, and then what we can't automate, we're also helping you manage Help and track. track it. Yep, absolutely. Very good. I think that's that, it. Was that yeah, everything? Let's get back to yeah. a slide. Right. So uh, this isn't all that we've done. Obviously, it's a big piece of what we're looking at doing. Uh, we'll be releasing with release 24, hopefully. Uh, but all the pieces that we also have done, we're going to be highlighting in our session for the update manager. We've got some enhancements for making it easier for the administrator role to be able to apply the update through our web. It streamlines things and, and enables automation, like you said, Paul. So really, we're taking a lot of steps and trying to make it easier for you guys to take patches and stay code current. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. All right. I mean, all hard right. to find. We'll be at the <laughs> We'll see you later. Well, before you go, though, Clayton. It didn't come in yet, but um, I do have the Bakhtiari jersey, oh, yes. the new one, on its way. Brilliant. So. All right. But for now, yeah, I'll get <laughs> 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 Nice. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Clayton. Awesome. All right, so we've looked at release 23, we've looked at release 24. I can, like I said, I can't get the whole team up here to show all the features that we've done. So um, we've got a quick video we're gonna queue up that kind of summarizes a few of the other uh, uh, enhancements that we weren't able to show today. Technology and innovation are transforming industries. J.D. Edwards released 24 driven by customer requests, is built for your enterprise's future and success. The advanced pricing system for procurement will allow you to optimize discounts and increase efficiencies in purchasing. Simplified auditing for blend management will help you trace a bottle of wine from the vineyard to the table. With release 24, 
you will be able to maintain optimal inventory levels for your enterprise by reducing stockouts and excess inventory. Allowing inventory allocations to be put on hold will make control of inventory movements much more efficient while also providing you with timely and accurate inventory availability. With Release 24, you can use Enterprise One Pages to build process models that enable you to bring enterprise automation to the requisition to receipt and shipment to dispatch processes. Release 24 will allow you to store all configuration settings in a single repository. This will simplify and automate configuration across multiple servers and when new servers are provisioned. Enterprise One tools and applications patching can soon be completely automated with the GD Edwards Update Manager. Beginning with Release 24, Enterprise One will have new features to help you track and create customized reminders for time-sensitive tasks. A redesigned workflow monitor will enable you to get positive visual confirmation that workflows are running smoothly and without issues. J.D. Edwards Release 24, coming soon. Awesome. All right, well, we've talked, like I said, the Release 23, what we've been developing over the last 12 to 18 months, and then Release 24, which will be coming out here in another few months. Now let's look even further out at, um, you know, kind of the art of the possible, if you will. Gary mentioned everything's AI, it's all AI, it's all AI. So I want to take you through a quick demo of what the team's been working on with the AI ML Accelerator team over on OCI. All right, to cue that up, uh, we've, we've got a, a, a you know, mocked up scenario again where you know, maybe your production manager has been getting notified about you know, some quality control issues around the gearboxes that they manufacture. And of course, you're feeling this uptick, this uptick in notifications, so you're going to want to do some sort of root cause analysis to try to figure out what factors could be contributing to that quality control problem. This is probably something where, you know, in the past, you're going to go back through your work orders, you're going to go through back, back through your quality records. It's going to be a fairly manual process to go sift through all that data to try and figure out that correlation. But with the AI ML algorithms, that we currently have available on OCI, we can take what was probably weeks or months down to you know, uh, uh, hours or minutes. Okay, so I will walk through real quick what that looks like. Cool. All right. Not authorized, awesome. Love live demos. Security, Security. exactly. So I'm over here, as you can see, on OCI. I'm in the, the Apps Accelerator. And we've already done the first step, which is take the JD Edwards data, pipe it over to OCI into a data lake where we can then serve that up to the algorithms, all right, and, and create models. So I'm going to skip you know, the ingestion piece, because I don't know that we all want to watch data moving from one system to the other. But once you have the data, wow. We are going to have a trouble, aren't we? This is why you don't do live demos. OK. We'll try one more time. Nope. All right. What are you thinking, Nicole? All right. So. <laughs> awesome. We have. Good Lord. Let's try again. Come on. Please? Hey, all right. Hey. Notice how we didn't panic? I mean, we're so used to this. All right. So back to where I was. We've already ingested the data, so now I want to go ahead and create a model and do my evaluation. To create the model, you simply go in, you choose a data set, um, which, of course, is what you had just ingested. 
you pick a target measure. So what, what, vari or what factor do you want to evaluate, right? In this case, we said we had a noise level problem. We want to figure out, you know, when is it going wrong and what were the factors that were influencing. But in order to know when it's going wrong, you get to set up the parameters on what's considered on target, what's within an upper or lower limit, as well as establish your, you know, below and, and, and above limits, right? So your exception criteria. This data set that we took has roughly 811 work orders that we're evaluating, right, to see, you know, how many work orders were within target, outside of target, et cetera. You then go in and can select features from that data set that you want to evaluate to figure out if they actually influence the results. Okay, in this case, we've got a supplier, we've got an operator, maybe there's parts that you want to look at, maybe there's a machine that you want to look at. You can, you can select each one of those variables and say, look, I want you to evaluate and, and, and tell me how often this, this actually had an impact. And then, of course, you select your algorithm. And your algorithms, these are pre-built, pre-trained algorithms um, th that, that are being provided. So again, as a business analyst, I can come in here, take my data, identify my features, select the, the, the actual algorithm. I don't have to build these things from scratch. I don't need a data scientist degree to, um, to do this, right? Once I have that model, I deploy that model, I let the system you know, generate results, and I'm gonna go look at those patterns and correlations to try to see you know, what, what it found. And you've, you know, in this case, like I said, we've got 811 different work orders, you know, 240 were you know, above limit, we got 106 below, and you know, almost all of these had, all those factors that I had to evaluate actually were present in this particular case. You know when the noise level um, when, the, when the noise level was out of range, but you can drill in further. You get natural language description of what was found. So again, you're looking for insights, right? What do you what are you going to take back? What sort of action could you take? Do you need to negotiate with the supplier to get you know a higher quality part? Do you need, do you just need to replace the part? Do you need to do some sort of substitute? Do you want to look at the actual operation and, and look at the actual machine? you know, and, and maybe check the maintenance on the machine. Maybe the machine was the problem, or in this case, maybe the operator needs some training. Who knows? But again, this is giving you all these actionable insights that you can take back into J.D. Edwards to, to try to improve and address, you know, your, 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 your problem, your quality issue, okay? And again, you don't, you don't need, to, it's all pre-trained, it's all pre-built. You know, we're looking at, you know, how do we get the data ingested from J.D. Edwards over into the AI ML accelerator so that you can take advantage of, of this capability, okay? With that, we'll go back. So if that use case wasn't, you know, if that didn't speak to you, so to speak, here's a series of other use cases that the team is currently looking at, all right? Anything from predictive maintenance to supply chain optimization, warranty analytics, price optimization. You know, if any of these use cases are of interest to you or the quality management one was of interest to you, uh, we do have an AI ML roundtable this week that I'd encourage you to go talk to the team, uh, bring your ideas, and uh, yeah. So that's AI and what we're doing with AI right now. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up here for, uh, fairly quickly. Quest should be pushing everybody. Everybody's got their mobile app, right? They got the InFocus mobile app, everybody's got it. So you should be getting a notification right now from Quest giving you a series of sessions that if you were interested in anything that we demoed today, um, especially the logging out and locking back in, I know that's, you know, that, that was, uh, I'm not sure we have a session on that, but. Anyway, um, if there was anything that you liked, the, the, the QR code that, that Quest just pushed you should have a list of sessions related to everything that we showed you, okay? So you can go get more information. Uh, the other thing that is getting pushed, obviously, is SIGs, okay? I strongly encourage everybody, if you're not participating in a SIG, you need to find one, you need to participate in it. Um, as, as we kept on reiterating, this is how the roadmap is getting driven. 80 plus percent of what we put out the door, especially from the application side and system admin side, is customer driven, right? And that comes from the SIGs, it comes from your voting, so participate in those. I will make a, a little plug. I think if you wanna go to the business analyst SIG this week, 
I'm not going to tell you why, but you may want to drop by. It'll be fun. All right, Learn JDE. We can't get out of here without, obviously, a plug for Learn JDE, your one-stop shop for everything JD Edwards, and a reminder that we're going to be back in Dallas next year for Blueprint 4D. Okay. Stay connected. We post on social media Monday through Friday. We try to make you aware of not only what we're doing, but obviously what we've already shipped. We've, we put our product announcements out there. We put you know, training materials out there. We put customer success stories out there. If you're not connected with us, get connected with us. There's a lot of great information that gets shared every single day. Myself, Gary, Ward, many of the members of the product team are all out there posting. Okay, And with that, I think we're done. So thank you all for attending in focus. I hope you have a great week. I appreciate it. Thank you to the team. All right. That's it. Thank you all.